Hey, good optometry morning. So if you're going to get macular degeneration, it's likely going to be dry. Hey, I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, your YouTube eye doctor, and today I'm going to tell you all about dry macular degeneration. But before we do that, we need to teach you a little bit about the retina. So the macula is a specific part of the retina that deals with your central vision. And it deals with about the 10 degrees of your central vision, and that's kind of about that much of your vision. So the macula is crammed pack full of receptor cells called cones. And you've probably remembered the terms rods and cones from elementary school. So we're talking about the cones, and those are the receptor cells that deal with your detailed vision and your color vision. And the macula has the highest concentration of those in the whole retina. And so when light comes into your eyes, those light rays are hit these receptor cells. Those receptor cells will convert that light energy into electronic impulses, and those will go through the optic nerve, go into your brain, and allow you to see things. Now that whole chemical reaction that goes on to convert light to electrical signal is a big deal and it takes a lot of energy, takes a lot of blood supply, produces a lot of heat and a lot of waste products. It's a very, very high metabolic activity. Now the things that support those receptor cells is underneath it, underneath the retina, there's a whole swamp of blood vessels that's called the choroid. And that swamp of blood vessels provides the nutrients for those receptor cells to do that job. And now in between that swamp of blood vessels and the receptor cell layers, there's a bunch of other layers, but one there's one particular layer called the RPE, or the retinal pigment epithelium. And I want you to think of this layer as the transportation center of the retina to provide nutrients. So the RPE helps take the nutrients from all the, that layer of blood vessels to the receptor cells, and then the receptor cells does its thing, does that incredible chemical reaction to convert that signal, and then it produces a lot of waste products, and the RPE is also the waste collection center. It transports all that waste, center, waste products from that reaction and takes them away. So the RPE has this very, very important job in transporting nutrients to support the receptor cells and then taking those nutrients away. And if it doesn't do its job right, then things can go bad. So now that you know the basic functioning of the retina, we can talk about macular degeneration. So to make it easier for doctors and for patients, we have categorized macular degeneration into kind of two main camps or two main categories. So there's dry macular degeneration and wet macular degeneration. We're gonna talk about wet macular degeneration. We're gonna do that a little bit later. Today, we're talking about dry macular degeneration. So about 80 to 90% of the people that get macular degeneration are gonna have the dry form of, the ma of macular degeneration. But both of them are considered a part of the same entity and this disease process. Dry macular degeneration is also referred to as non-exudative macular degeneration or sometimes referred to as non-neovascular macular degeneration. So if you see those terms, they also are the same as dry macular degeneration. So both dry and wet macular degeneration will start in the same way. So the problem in macular degeneration stems from the ability of the RPE to process the waste products from the receptor cells. So like I said, there's lots of waste products that go on in that complex chemical reaction. And if the RPE is having trouble taking all those wastes away, then they'll start to accumulate in the tissues underneath the receptor cells. So you can kind of think it like if the garbage service in your town goes on strike, so they don't all go on strike, so no garbage is picked up. Often the garbage service is reduced. And so the garbage trucks will still come and they'll start to take away some of the garbage, but some of the, they won't take away all of it. And so some of the garbage starts to accumulate in the streets. And that's similar to what's going on here. And so those waste products have a lot of inflammation in them. And we call those areas drusen or if there's just one area, it's called a druse. Now, when eye doctors look inside your eye with photos, those druse or drusen look like yellow deposits in the area of the macula. And so the problem with these areas of waste products and inflammation between the blood supply and the receptor cells is that they provide a hindrance or kind of a roadblock for the ability to transport nutrients from the blood vessels to the receptor cells. And that block of that supply of the nutrients to the receptor cells will eventually cause those receptor cells to be damaged and not function and we'll lose some of them. And there's millions and millions of them, but if enough of them start to starve or die or atrophy, 
then you will start to have reduced vision. So a lot of people will say, if you're gonna have one type of macular degeneration, it's better to have the dry because it's less severe and it's not gonna affect your vision that much. But that's not necessarily true. There are some advanced forms of dry macular degeneration can, that can absolutely devastate your vision. But generally speaking, the dry form of macular degeneration is less severe than the wet form of macular degeneration. But I'll talk about those more severe forms of dry macular degeneration a little bit later. So how do you know that you might be getting dry macular degeneration? Well, the answer is in the early stages, you don't. You will often not have any symptoms of any changes in your vision or visual function in the early stages of dry macular degeneration. And the only way that it'll be detected is by visiting your eye doctor and they'll take a look inside your eye and they'll see signs of it. And so the signs that they're gonna see is when they look at the macula, they're gonna look at that and they're gonna see signs of drusen, those yellow patches on the retina. And they're also, they also might see pigmentation changes in the macular area that might give a sense that there's signs of macular degeneration that's starting. And so this is categorized as the mild form of dry macular degeneration where there might be signs of it starting to the doctor, but you're not having any symptoms. Some of the tests that the doctor's gonna recommend to look to do this are retinal photos inside your eye and OCTs, which stands for ocular coherence tomography, which is basically like a high definition ultrasound of the retina that gives us a cross section of the retina so we can see the details and we can actually visualize those drusen in between the layers of the retina. And so this is the number one reason that if you're over 65, it's recommended you have at least annual eye exams to look for any early signs of mild macular degeneration that you might not be having symptoms for. So macular degeneration will often progress very, very slowly and gradually. And as it progresses and as some of those receptor cells are damaged and affected, it may start to affect your vision. And some of the symptoms that you might get initially will be rather subtle. So it might be some early blur in your vision, which you might just feel is a change in your glasses prescription. It might be some distortion or waving lines. You might have additional trouble with contrast, recognizing people's faces, seeing things low contrast, curbs and steps and things like that. But it also might affect your ability to dark adapt and see in the dark. If you notice any of these symptoms, absolutely make sure you go see your eye doctor and they will take a look and make sure that there's not any signs of dry macular degeneration starting. Now, if things continue to progress with dry macular degeneration, more and more and more receptor cells are gonna be dying and lost. And if you lose enough of them, it can result in severe loss of your central vision. And the advanced or severe forms of dry macular degeneration will often have their own category called geographic atrophy. And basically this means that all the receptor cells are lost in that particular area and it can have a devastating effect on someone's vision if it gets to that stage. Let's talk a little bit about some of the risk factors that you might have for developing dry macular degeneration. We definitely know it's related to age because it's often referred to as age-related macular degeneration or ARMD. So the older we get, more risk we are for our cells and our tissue to wear out. We know that it's related a little bit to genetics, that if some people in your family, that immediate family members, parents or siblings, have that gene, there's more likelihood that you have some of the genes that predispose you to macular degeneration. But we know that there are a lot of environmental factors that you can control to reduce your risk for developing macular degeneration. And there's a lot of people out there that feel that macular degeneration isn't just an eye disease confined to the eyeball, but it's a sign of more systemic problems in your body, particularly related to your circulation and your blood flow to the eye. Some people feel that there's a link to our cardiovascular health and the likelihood of you developing macular degeneration. So anything that you can do to improve your cardiovascular system and your general health is probably gonna help reduce your risk for developing macular degeneration. So the number one thing you need to do is stop smoking or don't start smoking. Smoking is the number one risk for macular degeneration. Other things that increase the risk for macular degeneration will include obesity, high blood pressure, and poor general health. So you wanna have a heart healthy diet, full of lots of green leafy vegetables, and you wanna make sure you're taking care of your general health. Now the other category of macular degeneration is wet macular degeneration. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about that, you should watch this video right here. And with that, have a great optometry day.